for participation in those processes. It feels like we're a little bit like Paris under Hussman or New York under Robert Moses. The estate ex expropriation, municipal fiscal discipline, sell your assets, Christchurch, property speculation, the sorting of land use according to the rate of return for its highest and best use. Our fear as ordinary citizens of Christchurch is the colonisation of space for the affluent and the powerful. So how do we act? Like what do we do? Well, the revolution has to be urban. And I think we need to learn from artists in particular who have this astonishing skill to see the liminal spaces, the cracks that we might slip into and act under. Now, part of the blueprint, so I'm sure most of you know the blueprint, the 100 day famous 100 day blueprint for rebuilding Christchurch. The bit that gets ignored are the changes to the district plan. There's this little thing in there that is our liminal space, our crack to slip through to exercise our right to the city. And it affects the resource um, consent processes. All temporary activities are permitted on central city business and central city mixed use zones until April 2016. We've got a window in which we can act. My friend Brian Reynolds, who runs uh, Initiative Gap Filler and Life and Vacant Spaces, says that the opposite of a permit, like a resource consent, is an invitation. So what we have is an invitation to act, to connect arts, architecture, design, urbanism, philosophy, community and action. This is an invitation to ordinary people to engage directly with the city, to exercise their right to the city in transition. So what are, what, what are we going to do? I think we have to explore this thing called do it yourself urbanism. It's a bottom-up approach to transforming urban spaces. It's often transitional or temporary. And it's distinct from those large-scale, commercial, spectacle-driven urban developments. In Christchurch, the consequences of this kind of action are the immediate reoccupation and regeneration, <coughs> especially of the central city, where we've lost 80% of our built fabric. So, I don't know how many of you know about that fellow. Uh, it was a little community organisation that developed after the September earthquake. And all they wanted to do was to offer small gestures or seeds to revitalise parts of the city, particularly vacant lots. And there weren't so many after September. And their February hit, and the task was just so much bigger and more challenging. Um, I'd like just to tell you briefly about one of their most successful projects. It's called the Dance Over That. And it's this portable um, piece of sprung floor with uh, let me see, a speaker and a light at each of its, its square, each of the four corners. And there's a coin-operated coin washing machine. You can plug in your MP3 player, your iPhone, you can put $2 on the slot, and the lights and the speakers activate. And on this spring floor, you can dance in the city. Now, they came up with this idea, and I said to them, one of them, the key, two of the key people are not um, from New Zealand, not from Christchurch, one's American, the other's Australian. They've lived in New Zealand for one of them over, 12, over 10 years, the other one about seven. I said, you don't understand, New Zealanders won't dance in public. And especially in Christchurch, you know, we're all conservative, we won't dance in public. I was wrong. Against this backdrop of this ruined city, people are dancing in public. And people of all ages are dancing in public. And it's become so successful, it was hibernated for the winter, and it's going to emerge at the end of this month um, in another part of the city, and people can't wait for it to be back. Gap Filler sort of, what happened for Gap Filler, it was so successful that um, they started being bombarded with ideas, oh, you should do this in the vacant lot, you should do this, and they only have limited resources. So they conceived this other body called 
life in vacant spaces, and we've had the support of the Christchurch City Council to do this. And um, life in vacant spaces is like the new Newcastle um, in New South Wales, a brokerage. So it will broker the use of vacant space for other people to use. Really powerful thing. They'll cover, they'll, you pay like, I don't know, around like $200 for their insurance policy, covers all the statutory and public liability concerns that property owners might have. And the idea is that you have a set lease period and then after, it might be 30 days, and then after that you're on a rolling 30 day lease where you can have this license to operate and you can pursue one of these activities, one of these ideas that you might have. But of course, you know, the new Newcastle that it's modelled on, in Newcastle their problem is empty buildings. Our problem is empty lots of empty sites. So all of a sudden we have a design problem. How do you occupy that vacant land? So we've, as Julia mentioned, we've come up with this notion of concentrating attention on this possibility through this festival. It's called the Festival of Transitional Architecture. And it's because, you know, we've only got till April 2016 when the resource consent process is completely open um, on those particular zone of lands. So this is one of the things, to concentrate attention on this possibility. And the transitional engages in both a serious and a fun on a fun level um, with ordinary people to gain an understanding of the city and how it's created. The other thing I really love about the transitional is that it blurs disciplines and boundaries. Artists, architects, community leaders and workers, teachers, children, anyone can engage um, in this with creative and emancipatory potential, that creative and emancipatory potential of the central city. The other thing I love about the transitional and that I'm enjoying about this transitional phase of the city, is that it's our common ground. Everyone participates. The government spends $30 million on a temporary stadium. In the festival, we might, we're probably hoping to put this wonderful gesture of a, 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 of a chapel and an empty, beautiful empty garden, just to see what happens. And in between is the dance and that, and the art boxes, um, and, all, and restart. There's all these different projects. So the transitional spans all these things. And in Christchurch, where there's so much um, antagonism and division, this is our common ground. Now, I thought about how this might relate to this discussion, this exhibition, um, and this practice. And I thought I'd end with a quote. There is a very strong case to allow simple, low-rise, well-designed, relocating buildings to link the remaining structures of the city in a clear and coherent expression of the beginning of a new focus. While long-term decisions are clearly thought through by intelligent minds working together, long-term decisions can build on this fabric. One cannot expect to begin with the end result. A nurturing environment must be provided as a seed from which a city can grow meaningfully. Architects who have generally been ignored, misjudged by the city as superficial and designers of isolated objects must play a part in the collective mind and the future uh, further resolution of this immense challenge. Those words were written by Ian.